All right, what is up everybody? It's Lids and we're back for another day of Pyre. Let's get going. We made a pretty good amount of progress last time around where, I mean, we had our first, what I assume, legitimate right experiment. Experiment? Experience? You know what I mean. And uh, I think we did pretty well, if I do say so myself. So we'll continue our journey. The Jomula Valley, which... We have not yet been to this region of the downside yet, but that is true. But Ruki knows this mountain pass through an arid region further north. Okay, so presumably that makes Ruki our expert here. And if we happen to have another one of those situations where we ha we can make a choice between which one of our companions we want to side with, then maybe it makes a little more sense to prioritize siding with Ruki this time. Let's see. The climate here in Jomir Valley is hot and uncomfortable. Top of that, Dodariel says, we have a stowaway. Whoa! Home? Can we go home? She must have latched onto the undercarriage as you crossed the bridge. Her manner is odd, though you sense she means no harm. She must have overheard some of your fellow exiles' conversations. You need but say the word, Edwin. Oh, come on! You can't be serious, Jody. It's just some kid! Who managed to climb aboard our wagon undetected, but still. Do it, Jody. Dodario approaches the girl and looms over her. Listen to me, girl. I cannot guarantee that we shall get you home. Or any one of us. But, at present, we have room for you. And adequate provisions you may accompany us in time. Interesting to see Joe Dario playing that role where she's kind of being the nice, welcoming person. To a certain extent, at least. Dario leaves without awaiting a response. Presumably to make room in the wagon for your new guest. The stowaway is overjoyed. Really? You're so kind. You are most kind. Someone you just met, like me? May the eight scribes smile upon you all. The eight scribes, we've heard about them a little bit in the Book of Rites. Some revere them as gods, believing they bound themselves to exile so that others could live free. Centuries of oral tradition have shaped the history of the eight scribes into myth and legend. Yeah, so that sounds familiar. There's a chance we've read that before. She claps her hands, bursts into laughter, and performs some sort of dance. Ruki stares at all of this and leans in close to Edwin. Hey, so, uh, what gives? First the reader, now we're taking her along? What, are we gonna take in every mite-bitten drive imp we find now, too? Easy, Ruki. I think he'd want for us to bring this one along. Oh! Sandalwood? I thought you said he asked we find someone in a, to fit in every type of mask. Near as I can tell, yours would fit hers just fine. Sandalwood. I don't think we've heard that name before. The apparent name of some mysterious informant of Hedwin, Jodariel, and Ruki. This is the person that the previous right competitor we were competing against was talking about? That we tried to ask, or had the option of asking about, but we didn't quite get that information. He asked that we use our best judgment. Besides, if we send her away, she'll go telling anyone she finds about us. We can't risk that right now. So, tell us, Talia. so um, uh, can I come in? It's very hot, and uh, I'm a little thirsty, and uh, a little tired, too. Yes, you're welcome here with us. One question, though. What do we call you? Um, well, this is embarrassing, I think, but, uh, I don't know for sure. It's just, uh, back home they called me lots of names, and, like, for the color of my hair. They made fun of you just because you got gray hair? That's it! My name! It rhymes with gray! My name, my name, it don't, uh, it just, uh, it just, they call me, they call me lots of names. You sense the girl is 
struggling to recollect a certain name she felt best suited her. You think that you can help the stowaway girl make peace with her name. Let's see. So, her name rhymes with, well, May K Fay Day. Okay, so what makes the most sense? Do we get a little... Okay, I mean, the description does vary a little bit here. But, uh, not sure anything is particularly informative here. I don't think there's necessarily a right answer, per se. Ooh, what happens if we consider other possibilities? Consider more ways. Bang! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this one cannot possibly be right, can it? No, can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. Let's go with Tay. I don't know. Could be anything, right? You suggest that the stowaway's girl, the stowaway girl's name is Tay. Why? That's it. My name is Tay. My name is Tay. Where I am from, they call me Tay the Tattle. But uh, I guess maybe you don't have to say that part because. Uh, I didn't really like it. Your fellow exiles decide to bring Tay along for now. She almost collapses from exhaustion, so you take her in and show her somewhere she can rest. Tay joined the group. She's tired, but excited. All right, let's welcome her aboard. So we got a new member for our group. It's pretty sweet. No idea what to expect from her. I mean, supposedly she's a little girl, and so from a gameplay mechanic, standpoint she might be a little bit like rookie and be a little quick character with a small aura that's easy to maneuver around but we'll see the black wagon arrives in a somewhat peaceful stretch of jomir valley your companions wish to hole up here for the night to give tay and all your little all of you a little time to rest hmm. okay consider your options having pitched camp with your companions for once it seems you have some quiet time to spare. We can do that, or we can go into the Black Wagon. I'm not sure. You know, it seems like if we go into the Black Wagon, we're probably gonna end up talking to our companions. So I feel like these things are gonna end up being the same, but let's go with the Black Wagon so we can make sure that in case they are separate things, that we get the chance to talk to probably Tay or other people and get a sense as to what their thoughts are about bringing in a new member to the group. And then I'm assuming that this is more so the thing that keeps the primary objective campaign going. So that's why I say let's prioritize this first. Okay, so there's Tay. She seems to have something on her mind. What? Tay seems to be recovering well since you found her. She seems fascinated by everything and everyone in the wagon. Let's see what it, this uh, description of Tay says. She's a young vagabond girl with an odd manner and an unshakable sense of curiosity. Hmm, okay, so she might get us in trouble if she gets a little too adventurous. We'll see. Oh, hi, Master. You are the one who knew my name. You guessed it right. You did. Thank you for your hospitality. I've just been eating with the imps and talking to the wagon. This wagon, he and I are the same age. Almost to the very day. But I am older, by three weeks, so I'm giving him a hard time. Little brother, I call him. He's a good wagon, isn't he? He'll just take us very, very far. My little brother, sure, he pulls at my hair at times, and I don't like it very much. But he is family. I am happy to be here with my family. I thought that I'd lost them all again. I thought that I'd lost them all. Oh, but we have stopped now, haven't we? And I should go outside to dance, in case scribes are watching. Scribes, some revere them as gods, believing they have bound themselves to exile so that others could live free. Huh. Okay, so scribes is the same description as we had for specifically the eight scribes before, so I think it might be safe to assume that anytime we see scribes that it's specifically referring to those eight and there isn't some larger less prominent, less famous group of scribes that it might also refer to. That's good for reference. Bye, mister. Smiling back at you, she prances out the door. All right? 
so that was Tay. I'm just curious if we have anything else in here that is different. Can we go up here yet? No? Okay. Uh, I'm guessing that we trigger the Book of Rights, or we click on the Book of Rights that triggers the next campaign event. Yeah, let's see. Or maybe we'll just get a description here. And, uh... No, no, this is the same thing that we read before. Okay, so, doesn't look like there's anything new there. Let's keep moving then. And now we see it doesn't have... Didn't have, like, a little speech bubble over here before that seemed to indicate that we had some potential dialogue options if we were to go into the cart, but now that's gone, so presumably we're done here, and we ought to move forward. Your fellow exiles are taking a moment to unwind. Their Dariel motions for you to join them. Best get used to your new life here, reader. You seldom get such moments to reprieve. Perhaps some future study of that book shall pass the time. You could join me for a little stroll if you're feeling up to it. Always something to be forged around here. Or you could teach us more of what you know. Prepare us for the next rite. In any case, we do what we can to stay busy. Keeps the sense of isolation well at bay. At certain junctures, you may choose from several vocations. Ways in which you can make yourself useful during occasional moments of free time. Hmm, okay, so another element that ties in some choice here. Let's see what we have time to do, what our options are. So we can forage for resources, search the surrounding area for valuables, to add to your black wagon stash of goods. So that's what we ended up doing last time, I mean, unintentionally, but we ended up taking a side road, according to Joe Dariel's suggestion, and ended up picking up some valuable goods. So, I mean, maybe we could continue deliberately along that path and try to build up a massive amount of wealth and use that for whenever the next time we reach a market is, which we get to encounter, but maybe that'll be significant. Otherwise, we can study in private, hone your skills as a reader to grant small global bonuses to your fellow exiles during the rites. Interesting. Okay, so this would be the most gameplay enhancing option, I guess, and that we're actually making our allies stronger if we take this route. So that might be an interesting option to pursue as well. Let's see what this one's about. Mentor a companion. Teach your fellow exiles of the old ways to raise their individual rank in the rights more quickly. Hmm. Okay, so we have basically increased the value of our inventory. Generally give a small bonus across all of our allies or pick and choose a specific ally for a more significant upgrade. So, hmm. I think what we ought to do is, like I was saying, we kind of ended up going this route with our previous decision, so I'm thinking let's not go that route this time. And then that leaves us with either doing the passive improve all of your allies a little bit option or the select a specific ally and improve it their capabilities a lot option i think it's early enough that we don't really want to be playing favorites at this point in time i'd rather get a better sense as to what each of the characters is like get a better sense of their pros and cons what their strengths and weaknesses are and for that reason i think it makes the most sense to generally improve all of our allies capabilities equally and wait to pick favorites until later. So you find a relatively quiet clearing to study the Book of Rights. With undivided attention, through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. So attribute bonuses you bestow on all of your fellow exiles who participate in the Rites, the Triumvirate whose reader is well attuned to the book, has an inherent edge against its adversaries. Okay? Focus on which aspect of the Book of Rights. Okay, interesting. So each point of hope are teaching its its teachings and their wisdom. So each point of hope slightly reduces your fellow exile's banishment duration during the rites. So that's interesting. So we saw that 
if the enemy successfully hits us with an attack or if we score, then whichever one of our characters gets hit is temporarily out of the competition for a little while. So this will speed up the amount of time that they uh, get back into the action. Then it's authors and their prowess. Ooh, increases quickness. I like that a lot too. Does, like I was saying, I think last time round, I really like how Ruki is noticeably quite a bit faster than the other characters. And on the other side, Joe Dario is quite a bit slower. And that makes it seemingly quite tough to do a lot of things with her. So that might be an intriguing option. And then we have the innate mystic power, which gives plus one presence, which means slightly increases the size of the fellow exile's aura during the rite. So admittedly, I don't have a great understanding for what all the pros and cons of having the large aura are, because I feel like in many ways, the way I'm currently playing, it's almost like it's a, a downside having a big aura. I mean, defensively, I assume it's helpful because it means that you have a larger area that you can guard and make sure that your opponents don't get through. But at the same time, I feel like offensively, it's a pretty big downside in that it also makes it easier for enemies to take the pyre away from you, or the, the ball. So, uh, yeah. I think this is definitely the last or my lowest priority here. And then we see this one is grayed out. I assume that we can't do this. Each point of glory raises how much damage is basically what that is. I think your exiles deal to the adversary's pyre in the rights. Okay, we have to master the other ones to unlock this, which may mean, as you can see here, that we currently have zero out of two for all these. I wonder if that means we have to get two out of two for all three of these, in which case it'll be a while until we get this. Or maybe we only have to do one for each of them, or get one to fully upgrade. Now, master the other aspects, plural. I think we have to go through six of these before we'll have this as an option, so... Okay, that would suggest that there's certainly the possibility to get a lot more of these going forward. But I think, for now at least, I like quickness a lot. So let's go with this. You concentrate on your knowledge of the eight scribes and how together they compose the Book of Rites among their many truths. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within, you cannot tell. But we gained the reader's influence for celerity, which increases quickness. We now have rank one, two. We'll finish our study. And looks like we don't have anyone to talk to, so we'll keep on going. Static music. Path leading further west splits off, and once again, your fellow exiles turn the choice of where to go over to you. Tay seems enthusiastic for whichever route you choose. Okay, not so surprising. Okay. Oh. So is this the, this looks like the final destination. Yeah, and these are the two routes we can go. Okay, so we have Tay is suggesting this route. Blue Hive, that uh, does not sound particularly pleasant. The north route across the Jomir Valley passes the remains of the Hive Titan. Tay believes those who travel this path shall be strong as the goal of the Eight Scribes. Hmm, okay, so that would suggest that maybe going this route might, again, improve our character's attributes. Whereas if we go fall flat, which also seems uh, maybe not so great of a description. Okay, but also this is Tay suggesting it, so I guess we can't take the approach that we took last time where we based our decision primarily on which ally we were siding with. It's Tay, it's Tay either way. The south route across the Jomir Valley is riddled with barren rock and foam. Okay, Tay believes those who travel this path shall be as swift as Jomir of the eight scribes. So, strong versus swift. I mean, if we're going the attribute route, I would assume this improves quickness, and I would think this improves whatever the attribute was that increases the amount of damage that we deal. 
And I mean, based on that encounter that we just had with our reading segment, based on story time, it seems like it's hardest to upgrade how much damage you do. So it might be, I mean, we're metagaming a little bit here, but it seems like it might be a little bit better to go this route. It's a little harder to upgrade this. Presumably that means it's a little better. So let's give it a go. Colors are still bright. I know they were saying in the previous zone that the last place we were was the most lively and verdant of all the locations, but I mean, this too looks amazing. So Tay is behaving stranger than usual as you pass through the dusty wastes of Blue Hive. The scribes! I think they're here. I think that they were here. Do you not feel their presence in the sand, in the air, and all that? At first, Pay it a little heed, though later you observed your fellow exiles seem to be in better spirits than before. Perhaps it was the previous day's rest that did everyone good. Your companions gained plus one presence. No, it's the aura size! Ah, I didn't want this. <laughs> this is the attribute that I was saying I'm not a huge fan of. Okay. I mean, I'll take it, of course. I think it's the one that I maybe understand the least or at least understand the benefits of the least when it comes to the actual performance and the rights but maybe it's just a matter of hey we need to play more and get a better sense as to what exactly we can do to take advantage of that so onward to the spring of joe mirror you hear all about the roving slug market ah so these are the markets that we were talking about before which appears to be nearby rookie insists that you take a look after you settle in. It is literally a slug. Okay, I, I was wondering. Let's see what we have to say in the wagon before we talk to the shopkeeper. I'm guessing this, based on how the Book of Rights is particularly sparkly this time, and how we know that this is the location of one of the rights that, if we click on this, I'm guessing that means we'll start that encounter, but let's talk to Hedwin. He seems to have something on his mind. Edwin motions for you to join him. While his manner is as easygoing as ever, you sense he's searching for the right words for what he's about to say. You'd ask what I did to get thrown in here. Figured I'd tell you. The others know. You did ask him. I was on the blood border for several years. What is the blood border? It sounds grim. The northern edge of the Commonwealth is a flat and vulnerable expanse high-wing remnants seized upon it at every opportunity from the cover of clouds or darkness. Hmm. Okay, so it's kind of like on the border of the Commonwealth's territory, it sounds like, and so it was frequently under attack. For several years, an outrider. No real rank, but a pretty important job. Whenever the harp swooped in, it was up to me to raise the alarm. Harps are a winged race, also known as the high-wing remnants at war with the Commonwealth. There you go. They are as coarse as their feathers, hold themselves superior. The Arch Justice and Robellies, the Ninth. Okay. One day the harps came without warning. No alarm. There was a slaughter. So I heard. I wasn't there. I was... I was with one of them. She... Look, that's a story for another time. The point is, they branded me Hedwin the Deserter before they sent me here. He wanders downside in search of a way to regain his freedom and return to his home. Okay. Seems like, I mean, we've had that description, or we've had a description of Hedwin before, but it seems like it might be a little bit updated as we're getting to know a little more about his background. I didn't want to fight. I abandoned my post. My friends, hate dearly for it. I ended up down here. Edwin looks at you as his smile reappears. It's not something I like to talk about, as you can tell. But I know that you've been wondering, and you deserve to know. I made a promise to you earlier, when we first met, that you'd go free as well, if any of us go free. That promise might not carry that much weight, 
I'm a deserter. Anyway, that's all. Thank you for hearing me out. There's not much good in here downside, but at least the pass is behind us. He leaves you there to consider his words. Ah. Oh, I also totally missed what the hotkey was to open that up. But... It seems like somewhere, at least, we have a quote-unquote roster with a little more background information about our allies, and hopefully we'll get to hear a little more about that in the not-so-distant future when maybe we hear more about a different ally. We can catch up on Headwind then as well. So the slug market is where you can trade for your forged goods for things of greater value. So I was saying this the other day, but uh, I really I guess I didn't know that we were going to be buying and selling a bunch of items here, so I don't know what to expect. Odd creature. <laughs> that is a, it's not like a goblin sitting on top of a troll's head or something like that. And along with a slug, of course, because this is, of course, the slug market. But, hey guys, hey, uh, how's, how's it going, Mr. Greensale? It's, it's been a while and all that. Hey, Ron. It's going. Ron, well, he's a traveling sales creature and proprietor of the Downside Slug Market. Say, uh, how, how come you've set up shop all the way out here? Isn't this, uh, a little out of the way? Oh, well, it's, uh, just say, you guys, you ain't my only customer. You see, Dad and I, we know this business pretty good, and uh, been around the block, and so, uh... As Ron keeps blathering, Rupee signals you <laughs> into a, a furtive way. I actually don't know what that means. Here's the deal, chum. Got an informant says there's something here connected to this rights business. Let's see if you can spot it. Should be able to pawn some of our stuff to make a trade. And don't even worry about it. Falcon Ron. Okay, the, the guy. Uh, Traitor. So, uh, anyways, you guys got uh, something for me or what? Uh, that black moon you got there is. Uh, I'll, I'll take it off your paws if you want. Yeah, I have no idea what, <laughs> what voice to do for this guy, so I'm going all over the place. Let's see. So, this is our cargo, this is his cargo. So we can. Drag this over and get 30 coins out of it. Confirm the tra the transactions. You shall have 40 in total. So I guess we started with 10. Hey, uh, you know, I'll take it, Mr. Greentail, though. You drive a pretty hard bargain. Now, you gonna take something off my hands here, or, or what? Drag. Moon crest your stash. This one? I mean, I am curious what the- oh. Okay. I was gonna say, I am curious what the other ones are. See if there's anything of note. Okay. So we can't afford any other ones, is the immediately apparent thing, as you can see from the cost in the top right corner here. But it looks like they all give different bonuses. So this one, at the start of the right, Bear's Pyre automatically gains seven life, essentially. So makes it harder for our right to get taken down. And then here we have when plunging into the adversary's pyre, the bear deals bonus damage. Okay. Oh, and it says rank 5 talisman. Okay. Whereas this one says rank 10. While carrying the orb, the bears move faster than usual, plus 10%. That sounds really powerful. That sounds really good. Alright, and then this one. After being banished by an adversary, so if one of our opponents takes us out, the bear has a chance to return immediately. 30% chance. Hmm. Okay. Also, love how the shopkeeper is hopping along to the music. That's great. Alright, let's purchase it. I mean, if we have the option to do more trades in the future, then I'd probably like to save up for some of those higher ticket items, bigger ticket items, because it seems like some of those might be really good. And there might be more options as we progress to future slug markets, but who knows? That's a one-of-a-kind thinger you got just there, you know, and uh, you got yourself a real good deal from me, so, uh, well, uh, 
So thanks. Switch to the roster to equip the talisman. Okay, so the roster is the thing that we saw the preview of before, but didn't get the chance to actually open. So glad we did get the chance to do that soon. Apparently, any one of you bozos can get a little edge out of that thing. During the rites, and I mean, uh, just a question of who gets to try it out. I also totally just did the, the shopkeeper's voice for Rookie. I'm mixing them all up. We'll figure out which ones we want to do for each person, but each of your fellow exiles may have a talisman equipped, so it sounds like you can only have a single talisman. So who gets to wield it? So... I think what makes the most sense is probably Jodariel. The reason for that is... Which stat is it? Next the amount of damage, move speed, aura size, duration of banishment. So she has 11 seconds. Ruki gets banished for like half that time. And then Hedwin is, I'm assuming, somewhere in the middle? Yeah. So I think it makes the most sense for Jodariel because she gets the most punished by getting banished. So it's the biggest deal if we can get this bonus on her. And uh, it looks like... I mean, originally I was wondering if this is kind of a you do it once and then the effect goes away type of thing, but it seems like we may actually get that for all of our rights. As long as we have this equipped on Jodariel, it's not like it goes away after the first go-round. Oh, okay. Here are the bios as well. Okay. Let's give those a quick peek. Assuming we can... Oh, nope. Cannot access the bio at this time. I take it back. Is that the case for all of them? Yes. Okay. Maybe not. Anyways, uh, Dad over here, his, his feet, you know, we, we've been having some trouble with his feet. Getting real something or other from all the hooping around. And so you see... Rookie indicates to you that now would be a good time to depart. Run away! See you, Mr. Greentail! And your friend there, too. I, I like him. Seems real nice, you know? Alright, and I think it probably means that it's about time to do the right. As you complete preparations for one of the rites to commence, you notice Tay approaching. You notice, too, that she is wearing your companion's rings. We can go home? Tay, I thought I made myself quite clear that you were not to touch those robes. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Otario. I, I just thought that maybe you were being funny at the time. Hey, uh, something's happening in the sky. I, I think we're up. During the rites, avoid the auras of your adversaries and banish them with your own. See, that's the thing with the auras that gets me, is I'm not sure when they're gonna banish me and when I'm gonna banish them. Why, it must have been the stars. Although it seems that your triumvirate now numbers four exiles, not the expected three. Breaking the rules. The rules of the rites were not created for you to dispatch. Or not. Prepare now to confront the fate. Yeah, they a still honor the traditions name. of the scribes and surely have been longing for this chance. But first, you have a choice to make. Oh, did you? The sky burns bright once more as you meet your next adversaries in the right's approach. Oh, I... Let's try that one again. The sky burns bright once more as your next adversaries in the right's approach. There we go. Their apparent leader is Bent Old Kerr. Bent Old Kerr will regard you with a formal bow. Huh. Ooh, that's interesting. At his side is an intense young man. I mean, I don't think he matches anywhere near Joe Dario's intensity just based on his appearance, so uh, I don't buy it. I hail you, exiles of Nightwings. 
grateful you chose to grace us with your presence once again. I am called Darbert Oldheart. This is my son, Almer. Dalbert, he's an honorable old cur bent on upholding the sacred traditions of the rites with his son. There's Almer, he is the dutiful foster son of Dalbert Oldheart. I mean, I don't want to say something about how they don't exactly look like family, but okay, that answers some questions. Uh, and is very protective of him above all else. Not tell them, father. We need not greet them, father. We shall face you in the field this night. May the victor's pie burn eternal. First, we offer you a token of good faith, a show of appreciation. Night wings have returned. Dalbert approaches you, something in his paw. You sense his motives are sincere as he hands you a small talisman. Ah, okay. Receive Tailwind Crest. Grants the bear plus two quickness. Oh, yeah. Do I get to choose who uses that? Or are we just gonna hold on to it in our inventory for the time being? That cur was very kind, and his son so caring, wasn't he? Sheila. When can we start? I want to help you beat them. We need three of us exactly to conduct a right. We've got four now, besides the reader. This ought to be his call. Someone has to stand aside this time. I volunteer. Not volunteering, chum. It ought to be the reader's call, remember? Very well then, reader. Who shall it be? Henceforth, you shall choose three exiles to con conduct the rite. Okay, okay. Who shall conduct this rite? So, we have Edwin, who again is kind of the middle ground character. I'm wondering, okay, so we can give someone this new talisman. So we don't need to stash it in our inventory. We can actually use it immediately. So I, I like that. So Edwin is kind of, or Edwin, didn't even notice the H there because it kind of just looks like a, a big bullet point or something like that. But okay, so he's sort of the, the middle ground. Dodario, like we were saying, is the big, slow character. And it's actually the only character thus far that has gained the first round of enlightenment. See how close other people are. Edwin. So that's kind of like the experience bar. Then we have Ruki. Okay, so Kerr is apparently this species. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Uh so he's the little speedster, and I'm assuming he's probably quite similar in stats to Tay. I would like to confirm this suspicion. So we have Glory 15, which is how much damage. Phase 20, quickness, 19 versus 17, and presence is, what does that do? The aura size? Okay. Interesting. So Tay is, as I had suspected, she's almost like a middle ground between Hedwin and Ruki. Hmm. And that she's pretty small, pretty quick. I'm a little surprised by how big her aura is. I would have assumed it would be much smaller than that. She also appears to come back from banishment pretty quickly. So she seems good. I mean, my natural preference, I feel, is going to be to use all the little quick characters because I like to maneuver around our opponents, but I think that I'm gonna try whenever I can to avoid that tendency because I feel like if I don't make a conscious effort then I'm just gonna go that route every time. So for that reason I think as much as I really like Ruki, maybe, well, let's go Jodario, Ruki because again I find it hard to leave him on the sidelines and then we'll go with Tay as the last one and Hedwin, I mean he did volunteer to sit down so I mean we'll have him sit out. And then that leaves us with the question of who do we give the Tailwind Crest? 
who do we give the quickness? So here's an interesting thing. We can emphasize the quickness even more on Ruki and make him crazy speedy. Or if we put it on Tay, she's actually the same quickness as Ruki. So we have two equally speedy characters. Um, I think, though, what I want to try to do is do just that. Make each character more of a specialist so that we really get to play into what makes them unique. Don't have to tell me twice, jump! Okay, so Ruki. We're gonna pick Joe Dario. As you will. You can see the, the difference in size there. And then we're gonna go with Tay. Oh, me? Thank you for believing in me because I think the scribes do too. Very well. Hey, I'll have other chances. I think you did the right thing. And we knew that Hedwin would take it well, right? Nightwings! I trust you are all well prepared for these. Old eyes yet see the rites shall be commencing momentarily. Are you quite ready to, my son? Hope so, father. Here now, let me show you. So speedy. Oh, I tried to be speedy. I wasn't speedy enough. But that's why the speed is so good. You just zoom by people, and I think that is so advantageous. There we go. Tate score as well. Look forth, my son. The waters of Jormir many may bring blessings onto this eve. Perhaps our chance has come at last. Uh-oh, are they about to get more powerful? So what is this? Six of the eight scribes of the Book of Rites, known as the Brave or Alpha Chief. An Alpha Chief that united the curves under a single banner and charted half of the known world. Okay, so, I mean, I suspect that this means they are about to throw a little bit of a monkey wrench at us. We need more than blessings to prevail against them, Father. Please, keep fighting. Right? Collect the moon drops. That I can do. Gotcha. Can't stop me! So Tay has a very interesting uh, sprint. It's quite different. Ugh. That was silly of me. No! Ah! That's the first time we've gotten scored on, I think. And that was not the best job from on my part. There we go. Like, Tay kind of does a slide here. It's a little, a little strange. It takes a bit of getting used to. Oh, you are so fast! Dalbert's aim was true. Okay, we gotta be a little careful here. And a little careless. Wait, what if we just get rid of their entire team, though? Uh... Rookie is so fast, though, that you can't stop me either. Oh, dodged it. Nick. I should probably pass more often. This probably would be helpful. Oh, excuse me. Yes, we need to be very careful here because, yes, we just lost our last character. It's not good. Out of here. Ow! That's it! Ah! 
I should have jumped there. That's my mistake. No! Stop doing that! I also need to remember to start throwing at the, uh, the gold. Glorious. That is also an option that I've not really been using. Alright, well that was just easy. <laughs> but Ruki is just gonna score every time for us, it seems like. He is very much our go-to character. Aha! What we get for passing more often. No! Ah! It was such a good maneuver we were building up there. Where is it? Oh, it's down there. I did not even see that. Yes. No! I tried to throw it at, <laughs> at the goal that time. It was the first time in a very long time. I'm doing it. And it is done. The night wings prevail. All right. A perfectly agreeable performance overall. Definitely not as you clean as our previous so performance. Next time. I guess we won. Indeed. I wonder what will happen to the fate. It seems so nice, didn't they? Exiles of the Nightwings, the dawn is yours. May you earn your freedom. But father, the dawn might have been ours. Failed. And I have failed you. Nonsense. We are the fate. We do what is ordained. Nothing else. Now let us go, my son, for I am weary once again. There is much to learn from this experience. Interesting. So even Edwin got experience, even though we had him sit on the sidelines. It seems the exile Ruki opened up his eyes. Okay, so Ruki has leveled up. And we can see here, it looks like, I mean, Ruki's kind of covering it a little bit here, but conducted the right, so characters will get some experience from actually participating, which Edwin did not do. And then prevailed in the right. My guess is that everyone gets those experience points regardless of who actually participates the whole team benefits if we win that's my guess at least so see that chums oh rookie green tails got some bite in him yet okay so uh let's see we know as i've said i'm a big fan of using rookie as our primary goal scorer or i guess higher attacker <laughs> Look, the soccer analogies are going to continue to come in, right? So, <laughs> Ruki can jump a second time while airborne. Ooh, a double jump. So, admittedly, I have been very bad about using the jump key. So, that is something that we could use this as an opportunity to kind of force ourselves to use it more often. Uh, but as we were kind of suspecting from when we leveled up Jodario last time, it seems like, my suspicion at least, is that... When you pick one of these upgrades, you're committing to all the upgrades on this side. You can't mix and match, take an upgrade from here, and an upgrade from here, and go back and forth. So if we do go this route, then we should take a closer look at what the other things are here. So when sprinting, Ruby accelerates faster than usual to an even faster top speed. I mean, I do really like sprinting with Ruby because he is really fast. No creature bound to the ground could, could move near as swiftly as the Alpha Chief. Yeah, so that's tempting. Awfully tempting. And then after he is banished by an adversary, Ruki has a 50% chance to return in only one second. Ah, okay, okay. So then here, last one, Ruki can jump a second or third time while airborne. So I really like these two, because I love the speediness that Ruki has already. So emphasizing that even more, again, goes along the lines that I was talking about before, where I feel like the best strategy might be to prioritize making characters as specialized as possible to really emphasize what their strengths are and not try to make them a jack-of-all-trades but master of none on the other end 
And then I like this synergy here with Lucky Break because I feel like we're kind of already doing this with Rookie, but if you upgrade along this line, then it might happen even more where he's kind of like your super aggressive character that you use to dart around the, the arena. And that means that oftentimes he's probably going to get hit and he's going to get banished. But if he can respawn really quickly, then you're willing to kind of throw him out there and take those chances because you know there's a good chance that he's going to come back soon. And by comparison, you know, take someone like Joe Dario that takes a really long time to come back, and that's a much bigger risk you're taking if she gets uh, taken out. So I do like that side a lot. And then here we have Rookie deals an additional five damage when plunging into the adversary's pyre. I mean, also sounds great because, like I was saying, he is absolutely our primary goal scorer at the moment. And Ruki casts his aura 50% farther than usual. Like I was saying before, again, I'm not a huge fan of the auras, at least not yet. I'm not convinced. So this doesn't appeal to me as much, although plus 50% does sound like a big bonus. I mean, his aura is tiny, though, so that may not be a big deal for him. When Ruki banishes adversaries by casting his aura, the blast can banish nearby adversaries. When he banishes adversaries by casting his aura, the blast can banish nearby adversaries. Hold right to aura cast. Okay, so that's that's your attack. Okay, I just wasn't super familiar with calling it a quote unquote cast. But then Ruki cannot gain this map. Oh yeah. Master yet. And then the last one here is after plunging into the adversary's pyre, Rookie soon returns rather than remaining banished. Rookie, yeah. I mean, if we could mix and match here, I feel like there's a really strong case for taking a little bit from this side and a little bit from this side. You know, if we have to start on this one, fine. But then if we could, I mean, I'd like to take both of these, quite frankly, and then maybe the last one I'm not as inclined to take. So ideally, I would go one, two, three, and probably also this. If we could go further on this side, then I'd go here, I guess, and I really like this one, too, so my favorites are this, 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 and this. Um, so it's a, a little bit of a mixed bag with each of them. But I think the low side here is the lowest. Because, like I was saying before, I'm not a big fan of the auras. So I'm gonna go with this. A blessing from the Alpha Chief himself. Okay, okay. Until the stars align. Um, hello? Excuse me? I mean, uh, would you excuse me for a moment, do you think? Sedane Fruntai. You. You're one of them. Uh -oh. I'm getting a little nervous here. What do you want? Father Is needs me. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I think that I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, so embarrassed I am. Uh... What's the matter with you? It is against the rights for us to even speak like this. Um, I did not know that. I, I don't think. Uh, no one said anything to me like that. But then, all this, it's... Uh, it's all very new to me, and so uh, I thought, well, maybe. You say Tarifta. And not be serious. Laugh. Yes, I mean, uh, well, I like to laugh. I like to laugh a lot, and you, uh, how about you? Halibrale Prandas. This is a Nightwing's trick. Father told me not to speak with any of you. Uh, but uh, I just. Uh, I have to go. Isalia. Wait, Over, wait, I think, I think that's your name. Is that even your name? Wait! Oh? What was that? As you return to the wagon after defeating the fate, you notice Jodariel tense up and frown. Where did he go? Who? Wait, the, the sleeping guy? I didn't even realize there was a sleeping guy there. The minstrel. He's gone. See, it is true. 
There's no trace of the lone minstrel who I didn't notice existed in the first place, so my bad. Sorry, minstrel guy. Who had been lying still in the corner of the wagon all this time. He joined the others in search for him outside. Your fellow exiles have revealed nothing to you of the lone minstrel or how they found him, though you sense their concern as they scour the vicinity for him. We'll worry about the minstrel, my friend. We'll worry about the stars. Wherever they guide us, we're going. We gaze up at the stars once more. Seek out our destination. This is where we currently are, right? This is where we're headed. Ha'u, the Midnight Star. The Midnight Star burns right over the standing stones at the edge of the flagging hand. Oh! That looks unpleasant. Guys, uh, you, you sure we want to go that way? Everyone! We're headed back east. All the way across the valley. Toward the cairn of Aou, and according to the stars, the next rite shall soon commence here. The cursed imp fell the mighty bone titan, Sax Six Shoulders. That's a mouthful. That's right. We have to risk it. What if that uh, minstrel guy doesn't turn up by then? We shall find him on this night or another. They continue searching for some time. However, the minstrels nowhere to be found. All right, and with that being said, I think this is a good place to wrap up for the night. And uh, well, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.